Hey guys, Chris Davis from 4PlayerNetwork.com here. Uh, and if you're watching this right now, you're a financial supporter of 4Player. Uh, so thank you very much. And if you're not, how are you watching this video? But anyway, uh, so I promised, based on a survey that you guys filled out for me, thank you very much, by the way, uh, that I was going to do a Godzilla Let's Play series. It's a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I grew up loving Godzilla, uh, and I just figured that Godzilla games don't get a lot of coverage anymore because, I mean, there, there aren't that many. There were a bunch back in the 90s, but these days, there's only one coming out this year, and it's been about five years since that came out. Six, if I think about it correctly, I think. Uh, but it's something that I've always wanted to... Uh, talk about and play and maybe do some writing on but uh you guys want me to do let's play so i figured hey i might as well uh run through a bunch of games from uh from now through in april through july uh culminating in uh the newest release which is coming out on the playstation 4 uh from nanko bandai but uh if we're gonna start there if we're gonna start with any godzilla game i thought that we should really start with uh the first one I played, uh, probably the first one that a lot of people played here in the United States, because up until the release of this particular game, uh, there hadn't been any in the United States as far as I'm aware. Uh, but of course, the game I'm talking about is the 1988 game Godzilla Monster of Monsters. It is a 2D side-scrolling kind of beat-em-up game from Toho. Uh, made by the developers did, that did uh, Puyo Pop, a series of uh, puzzle games. Uh, I, I believe they went about out of business in the late 90s, or were bought out. But uh, yeah, this is the first Godzilla game I ever played. And uh, I thought we should run through it, so uh, let's get started. This, of course, is a uh, game from... Uh, the late 80s in which Nintendo had hadn't standardized uh, uh, save chips inside their cartridges so th those were more expensive and so instead this the developer like a lot of other developers that wanted to have some kind of save system implemented a password system uh, I'm not going to be using that today but there are a bunch of cheats associated with this game uh, in fact two of them I don't know if you can see from the, the box right here uh, but I've actually got a couple of passwords here I used in my childhood that, if I'm reading this correctly, got me access to two of the later planets in the game, Saturn and Pluto. So anyway, let me uh, put that away. Uh, let's start a new game. So this is the prologue to the game. Uh, basically, it's about an alien invasion of Earth. And uh, it's up to Godzilla and Mothra to save the world. It is a, uh, a globe, literal interstellar globe trotting game, which you start out on Earth and you move on to various planets and you uh, face, off, face off against the aliens and the monsters that uh, are controlled by these aliens. Yeah, in the year 2000 XXX, the Earth receives a declaration of war from Planet X. Uh, Planet X was the planet featured in the uh, I believe it was the 1973 film not 173 something like that it was a it was a 60s film called invasion of the astro monster which was uh, featured over here in the United States edited together to be uh, Godzilla versus monster zero incidentally Mothra wasn't in that one uh, it was starring uh, Godzilla and Rodan and King Ghidorah as you can see on screen uh, but yeah, this, this is a very slow text crawl, but I figured I'd talk over it. Uh, but I love Godzilla games. I love Godzilla movies. Why? Uh, there, there's a lot of reasons for it. But, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'm rambling right now. I should really not do that. But anyway, let me talk about what's on screen. So right here you see in the background, that is the Gotengo. Uh, otherwise known as the Astragon over here in the United States. It was a 1963 film about the uh, uh, a war between the undersea continent of Mu, which is a theoretical kind of subcontinent uh, that was said to exist, kind of like Atlantis for the Pacific. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was also featured in a 
animated two-part OAV film called uh, Super Atragon that I really enjoyed as a kid. Uh, it was probably one of my first animes, in fact. But yeah, uh, it's it's interesting how much of like Toho lore is in this game. All right, well here we get started. We're we are on the Earth. So this is one of the main screens of the game. Uh, the idea is that you have Godzilla and Mothra. They move around these fields, this hex field, and each of these fields corresponds to a area in the game. So you've got these uh, these mountain shapes here that correspond to a, like a desert environment where you'll face enemies. Uh, that is an alien subspace environment. You'll tend to find uh, uh, alien uh, sort of trees, if you will, uh, that you have to face off against. Uh, that can be really useful for leveling up. Uh, right here, you got the jungle environment, uh, which looks more like kind of like a garden, like a monster-sized garden. And then right here, you have uh, the lava volcanic environments, which uh, each one of these environments tend to have separate types of enemies. Uh, and that plays into the strategy of the game of moving your monster around the board and uh, trying to level them up as best you can and getting into situations to where you can best fight your, the enemy monsters. So in every battlefield that you come across uh, on every planet, uh, you face off against starting with two monsters and every time you move on to the next battlefield uh, there's an additional monster added that you have to fight. In this case we have Gizora and we have Magura. Uh, Gizora up in, at this point in uh, Toe's life had never been featured in a Godzilla movie. He only appeared in the 2004 film Godzilla Final Wars at in a very brief mention it was a stock footage too uh, very briefly never actually fought Godzilla Gizora is instantly the weakest enemy in this game but he can be kind of a bastard but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute uh, now also we have Magura here Magura also had never faced Godzilla in a film he, he actually did in uh, the 1994 film Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, uh, part of the Heisei line of films that was a uh, seven films, they all had a, a standing continuity with the actual 19, 1954 original film. Uh, but yeah, he actually never fought Godzilla, uh, and he had his own timeline. It was kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I'm going to be fighting in this particular battlefield. Uh, as you can see, it says life for Magura is 8, and Gazora has 4. So, this is... Uh, it's a side-scrolling sort of beat-em-up game. And uh, monsters have life bars. Uh, Gazora has 4, Magura has 8. Uh, instantly, Godzilla starts out with 6, and Mothra starts out with uh, 8, I believe. Uh, each monster, you control both of both Mothra and Godzilla, and each have their own characteristics and traits. Uh, let me start out by moving Godzilla. So Godzilla can move two spaces on the map. Uh, he can move anywhere you choose, as long as it corresponds to a hex, uh, the a side of the hex you're already on. In this case, I'm moving him two across, so I'm moving him two mountains, and it spawns us into a map. So, here's Godzilla. He can jump, if you will. Uh, he's got a punch attack, a kick attack, uh, and if you hold down, he goes into a squat, and you can press down and B on the NES pad. Incidentally, I'm actually playing on an NES controller. I'm playing on a Retron 5 today. That's how I'm playing this game. I'm going to play several of the cartridge-based games. Uh, yeah, this is a controller. I probably played with this very controller when I first played this game. So, uh, tells you how much of it, I'm a little bit of a pack rat when it comes to old tech. But, yeah, and hold down B, he does a tail attack. So, you can, you can walk backwards, walk forward, but you can't walk back left. This is one of those classic NES games to where once you've moved past it on the screen, you'll never see it again. So, anyway, so here we go. So you gotta destroy a lot of the environment in the foreground in order to advance as Godzilla. 
You don't have to deal with that so much with Mothra. Alright, so let me talk about what's going on right in the, the screen right here. So we've got uh, enemies flying at me in the foreground, trying to attack me. And then above, we have uh, orbital enemies that cannot be destroyed. Uh, you saw a ship flying over earlier. It's called the, the Black Shark. It's from the 69 fill of Latitude Zero by Toho. Um, I haven't seen it personally. Outside of like uh, God, uh, the Godzilla films, I've never actually seen that many uh, non-kaiju Toho films. There goes uh, the my lone friend in the game, the SY3, going from uh, left to right. Uh, the SY3 uh, was featured in Destroy All Monsters uh, as one of the, the human craft trying to fight yet another set of invading aliens. The other thing in the background there is the Super X. Super X is the most recent uh, thing to appear in uh, this game. It's a... Uh, it was actually a weapon that took down Godzilla in the 1984 film, uh, which was in Japan titled, entitled just Godzilla. It was uh, made for the... Oh, let's see here. Let me, let me walk off screen and I'll get to talking here. Okay, so uh, it was made as a uh, counter vehicle to Godzilla to defend, the, to defend Tokyo in the 1984 film. It actually took down Godzilla for a little while before Godzilla kicked its ass. Incidentally, that, that was actually one of my favorite Godzilla films too. Now, back to the game, what, what happened there was Gizora uh, moved two spaces and stopped. Uh, the enemy monsters don't have to go through the side scroll. Uh, they just do whatever they want. But you swap turns based on the stages. So, I, I went first, and the enemy monster goes second. I'll go third now, another, and then Mocker will go fourth. Uh, it goes turn by turn, so it switches up monsters. So you don't have every single monster moving after one turn. Which is, I, I guess it's fair. So uh, let me move Mothra next. So Godzilla can move two spaces, but Mothra can actually move four. So I'm going to do one, two three, four. So I'm going to have her go through three mountains and one alien subspace area. Now the thing with Mothra is that she can fly, as you would expect. Uh, her main attack are these eye beams Oh, I didn't even... I, I forgot to show it. So, uh, each monster has a special power. Mothra's ability are these poison wings, which kind of looks like her wings are falling off. Um, but they're, they're good for, uh, hitting enemies that are directly below you. Now, the problem with Mothra is that she can get stunlocked very easily and take damage if she's shooting an enemy power. These, uh, these mazers right here, uh, will damage Mothra. Uh, but not as bad as you think, because I can actually fly over it. So I've got a black shark and... A Super X attacking me right now from orbit. I can't do anything to those. That red thing right there are uh, life uh, life pellets that will, uh, as it says, restore life here. I'm trying to farm for uh, help points right now so I can level up my monster. Get past these uh, meta cannons here. Another thing is that the enemies in the game will actually change color based on which monster you're fighting. So the, the orbital enemies will change to a blue hue if you're playing as Godzilla, and they change to a gold hue if you're playing as Mothra. It doesn't have any gameplay significance, but it kind of differentiates uh, what you're looking at on the screen. So it's not bland over and over again. So this is uh, one of the subspace levels, and I can technically get past this alien power tree here, but if I destroy it, I get a bunch of uh, points that will end up uh, uh, le help helping me level up my monster. So I'm going to go ahead and destroy this real quick. 
There we go. It got me a couple thousand points. Now it'll help me uh, level up Mothra in a bit. Now some of these enemies actually will respawn endlessly. So I've got a... Oh, shit. Sorry. So I'm, I'm playing on a Retron 5. Uh, and if I press down and start, it'll pause the game and pull up the, uh, the emulation menu. And see, like, the Retron 5 actually uses the original cartridges. Uh, but it loads the, uh, the ROMs onto the hard drive for the system. And it pulls up an, emu an emulation menu. Hi, BC. So, uh, well, if you want up, baby, you gotta come here. So... So yeah, if I press down and start, it'll pull up that menu. The problem with that is that uh, because of that, uh, because of Mothra's special power being on the start button, uh, it, I have a tendency to actually fuck up and pause the game. Now the SY3, it doesn't actually damage you. It's your only ally in the game. And it will uh, drop those gold or blue hue power-ups that will either A, give you, like, life capsules or power capsules. Hi, baby. How you doing? I do love you, but I'm busy right now. Or, or it will actually hit an enemy and damage it. Uh, they don't attack or help you very often, but it can be a lifesaver if you end up in a, uh, a bad position. Let's take out these Mazer Cannons. Super X in the background, which I can do nothing about. Oh, there we go again. I'm going to try and be more conscious of that, but it's, it's kind of hard to work around. I mean, technically, I could fly through all of this, or fly over most of it anyway. I'm tr Again, I'm trying to earn points here. I'm not taking that much damage, but I am picking up life capsules at every, every opportunity because uh, they will heal me. And they will give me points. All right, Magra is moving. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have Godzilla move down here to the spot where Mothra was and kind of act as a buffer. Mothra is a, a... She has more health and more power, but she tends to be weaker uh, when fighting enemies. And I'd rather... I kind of like having Godzilla start the battle and at least against Gazora have Mothra finish the battle. So will I fight the enemy? Yes, I will travel through the area and fight the various enemies that are in the stage. Will I fight Gazora? Yes. So, all right, let's get him, baby. All right, so here's Godzilla's Atomic Breath, which you, uh, you press start to unleash. Cat, you're drooling all over me. I love you, baby, but gotta move on. It's a video game. Serious business. Get through this terrain here real quick. Godzilla's punch ability, uh, is probably the fastest thing you can do in the game, but the I don't I think it's Godzilla's actually weakest attack. The kick is pretty powerful. Ah, shit, I'm gonna go into this battle with very low life. Shit. Okay. I'll do what I can. 
But Gazora's already at half health. Oh, you're cheesing me. This is, this is something Gazora's AI is kind of trained to do. It'll damage me slightly, but it's it more spawn camps me, so I can't do anything in the corner. Which is a real problem, especially when you have Mothra, which you're playing with. See, this is... Like I said, his AI can be just a tad cheap. Oh, so he must be finished. Okay. I leveled up and I got an extra life bar. And now it's uh, it's my turn again. So I'm going to move Godzilla forward. No. That looks like it wants to force me. So, uh... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Mothra back up. Nope. Two, three, four. I guess, I, I guess I'm forgetting that it actually wants me to force me to fight the monster. So, so I'll, I will move Mothra back up three. Have her recover. She'll she'll go back over some of the terrain that she's already been on, but uh, it's gonna help me level. So, because I mean, the monsters. I mean, Gazora was relatively easy to kill, but Gaz Gazora is also the easiest enemy in the game to kill. Period. And uh, you don't want to fight some of the later uh, monsters in the game because they will rock your world if you're not careful. SY3 with some more, some help there. Alright, go back to the tree area. Fight this again. faster. Technically, after every time you kill a boss, or most times after you get you kill a boss, you'll get uh, points to level up. Uh, but it's not all the time, and you can actually level up outside of a monster battles. That's what I'm trying to grind for. I like how a lot of these early, like, terrain... Uh, pieces actually give me life capsules. Yeah, another thing about Mothra is that she stun locks a lot more easy than Godzilla. I mean, uh, not only can the I beams from Mothra actually stun lock Mothra if they hit uh, enemy power ups or enemy enemy bullets. But she can get just stunned by the, the simplest things. Oh, Magra's engaging Godzilla. Okay. All right. His I beams are getting me. So I'm gonna try getting to stay there, and I guess I'm stun locking him in the corner here. So let me. Oh wait. See, I did it again. I think I'm. I think I'm gonna let Mothra go ahead and kill him. Or not? I guess not. Fine. Fuck you. So I leveled up again and got another uh, health point. So, so the stage is now clear of monsters. So I can proceed to the exit, which is that that city esque thing with the satellite dish. So let's get going there. 
so here's one of the jungle environments in the game. Uh, those things that are flying at me right now are P1s, which are left over from Invasion of the Astro Monster. Yeah, this is kind of a jungle environment thing. Let's see if the Super X is trying to get me from, uh, from above there. I can't pass underneath this thing here because it drops those uh, laser beams too fast. I kind of think of them as like corn stalks in my head. And you have these towers that you can only hit the head on. I mean, again, this is this is from an era of video games in which, ow, that hurt. Which uh, there were a ton of just weird ass freaking enemies to fight. Destroy this. Destroy this. What am I saying? And uh, do what I can. Come on, just fucking die. There we go. Actually, let me let me adjust my mic real quick. Press select to actually pause the game, which is kind of weird. But yeah, let me adjust my mic so y'all can hear me a tad better. All right, there we go. All right, so let's move on. Yeah, I need to destroy a lot of terrain because Godzilla's taken down both monsters now, and I'm gonna need her to be able to face some of the latter ones. Yeah, I'd, I'd preferably I'd want to face them all with Godzilla, but God damn it! But there will be scenarios in which Mothra has to fight, and I don't want to have her on a, at a low level because again, the enemy monsters can engage me. It's a subspace alien environment. Those are Gotogos, I believe. Uh, they're from uh, the film called Gotoga, which was, from what I understand, it was about basically mushroom people. Oh, there's some power capsules, which don't appear that often, but drastically uh, uh, restore your power instead of your life. All right, here's the base level, which is uh, can be a bit of a pain in the ass. You gotta, you gotta get your timing right on these turrets opening up again with the it's gonna be this is gonna be a more of a problem with Mothra than anything else every now and then a wall can open up uh, and block me with a turret or something like that maybe even actual wall will open up from a wall and uh, it'll definitely impede Godzilla but let me move Godzilla for a little bit So those flying saucers there are the Keylac flying saucers from Destroy All Monsters. And, uh, they, they're not much of a threat. Well, they will let me know I'm there. That's supposed to be Manda. Uh, yet another uh, Toho Kaiju. Uh, of course, uh, briefly appeared in 1968 with uh, Destroy All Monsters. But other than that, really didn't do anything in the damn film. I think he destroyed an overpass or something like that. Of 
course, that's because, you know, Destroy All Monsters was supposed to be like the final kaiju film for Toho. But it did so much goddamn money that they just decided to uh, keep making Godzilla movies. Let's get Godzilla a little closer, and let's try and level him up a little bit more. This way, three with a little support here. Not that I even need it, because I'm kind of kicking ass here. All right, and we're into uh, the other base. Now, one of the key strategies with Godzilla in this game is that uh, if you get hit with certain uh, enemy bullets, they will stun lock him. But if you hit him, if you if he gets hit while you're in an animation, it tends to pull out the stun lock, so you can keep proceeding. As was, as you saw me doing earlier when I was using Godzilla's Atomic Breath, uh, he keeps moving forward. He doesn't get stun locked when he gets hit by certain enemy bullets. So, let me move Mothra to the stage next. See a missile launcher there, popped out of the wall. Laser, or a lightning turret, I believe, something like that. Yeah, I can fly over these obstacles. I'm just trying to level Mothra up here. It says level three, but that's just what it is overall. That's why I threw a little support here. Oh, and uh, Super X's are coming in to try and stop me. Super X's are one of the few uh, orbital enemies that'll actually come in and attack me. Come on. And that's what I like. So certain enemies in these uh, base areas will be interconnected to other turrets. And if you destroy one, sometimes it'll actually destroy the other. Alright, so... Mothra has completed the field. She's at the exit point. So I'm going to send her to the next battlefield. Now, an interesting thing in here is that once that monster leaves the field, they don't come back. Uh, which is fine. Because by the time you've gotten to the exit, odds are you've uh, killed all the other monsters anyway and you're ready to advance. The catch here is, that is how the game uh, will give you a game over screen. Now, if one of the monsters dies on the field, if one of your monsters dies, that's fine. Well, it's not fine, but uh, they will reappear on the next battlefield. Uh, but if both, both of your monsters die, then it's game over. Now, if this, here's one of the strange things. If one monster advances to the next field, but the one you're playing on playing as dies, it's game over. Uh, they don't reappear in the next field and you have to restart the game. I don't know about you, that's kind of bullshit in my opinion. Uh, so you're going to be seeing me do save states in this game every now and then. Uh, I know that's kind of cheating, but the problem is this is a classic NES hard game. Uh, eventually it gets to the point where you're facing off a bunch of different mo against a bunch of different monsters and they will wipe the floor with you if they just if the AI just decides to do that. I'm going to try and get around that with save states, but if I have to cheat, you know, please don't blame me. So, let's get Godzilla to the next area. Yeah, that's going to happen. Come on. Come on. 
I want it. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Give me what I want. Yeah, fuck you, Super X. Come on. There we go. Alright, that level is complete, so I can move on to the next stage. And with that, I think I'm going to cut it, guys. Uh, what I want to do, at least with this game, is create individual episodes based on each planet that I'm going to visit. And this can be a pretty long game. I think there's like eight or nine different uh, areas. I think I've only ever completed this game once, because, again, this is NES Classic Hard. It's It will kick your ass if it just decides to. So, anyway, I'm going to cut it here. Uh... Again, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for supporting us financially. Uh, you help us do what we do. Uh, and we can't do it without the little bit of money. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you guys on Mars. See you then. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed a preview of this Let's Play series that goes beyond just one single game. It's a bit of a labor of love for me, because, you know, I'm a Godzilla aficionado. If you don't mind, please be sure to check out Nick's Silent Hill and Nolan's Uncharted Let's Play Pilots, and if you enjoy them as well as the vlogs and the top 5 videos we have in store for you, please consider supporting us on Patreon. So anyway, I'm out, y'all have a good one.